Hi, my name's Natalie, Natalie Matthews. Um, I am the founder of Height of Fashion and I am six foot three tall. I've always been very tall, but I think I noticed being super tall when I was probably about 11, 12 years of age. Very confident in it. I think having playing sport all my life really gave me, you know, that, that chance to feel confident in my height. I remember always in high school wearing heels and all my friends loving it. Much probably even to the point that I enjoy wearing heels, you know, just to stand out even more so, just for the fun and to see people's reaction to it as well. <laughs> yeah, I've got heels on. <laughs> I've always loved fashion, I've always loved new trends, I've loved kind of what's going around the world and particularly design as well, you know, what looks good, you know, fonts, photography, all of those kind of aspects and I try and pull that all into the business as well. Started High Fashion on the 29th of September this year, officially, but it's probably been in my mind or I've been working on it for the past year and a half. Heights of Fashion is a tall fashion company for women five foot ten and over. I definitely design everything with a business. Everything you see, I touch or I've had an element in it, definitely. Um, my plan is to eventually grow and expand it with a team and make it a full-time gig. I, didn't, I don't necessarily have exact fashion experience in actually like creating clothes as in via manufacture, no, but certainly business experience in running businesses for uh, three big retailers here in Melbourne. And I know how to sew and I know actually how to cut fabrics as well. So that's all helps me with the business. The current collection is designed specifically for everyday use. You know, you've got uh, blazers and you've got tops that you can wear every day to work as well as to, you know, week on, out on, with your friends at the weekends. And I've designed a number of dresses that are also fantastic for evening wear and um, occasion wear too. My go-to piece would also definitely be one of my dresses, which is an, the Knock 'em Dead uh, striped midi dress, which I absolutely love and I've had so many great reviews from. And um, I would probably say the active wear and the blazer and this shirt. From high to fashion in 2018, you can expect to see probably a jeans range as well as a jackets range and longer play suits with trousers in them. The biggest learning curve would definitely be managing and juggling everything at once. So not just with my full time job, but also with everything with the business from manufacturers to shipping to online business to sending out parcels to making sure all the fabrics and the designs are correct and accurate. The hardest thing I think really with anybody starting a business is to try and take your personal aspects out of it, as in try and actually think about your customer constantly, think about what they want, listen to their feedback, as well as it being positive and negative. That's very hard as a, you know, as a new player in this field because you need to listen in order to grow and actually change the business model. And also all of the unexpected things which happen in business, you know, that things that go wrong, delays in shipments, a garment might not work out to be accurate or correct on the sample that you get, and you're having to constantly think and be on your feet or your toes to really change and be able to move dynamically. What made me start it was honestly being so sick of not having options as a tall woman that are sexy, that you know are sophisticated, that look good and actually makes me feel good wearing it. Mm. I love my body, I love my height and there's nothing or no other brand out there that caters for that at the moment and that's why I just saw this niche and I wanted to really hit it home you know because there are other tall girls out there that are confident, they love their bodies, they, they embrace their height and they want to feel good, you know, they want to have an option that makes them also look fabulous and that's what Height of Fashion is all about, is actually bringing that confidence, that ability to stand out from the crowd and empower as well as feel great that you're kind of what you're wearing and, and what you're bringing to that, that scene. So, um, Tour Guides magazine has obviously opened up the question poll to some of the readers and I'm just going to respond to three of the ladies that uh, gave in, kindly gave in some questions to answer. So the first one is from Rachel. Yeah, so Rachel in the UK would love to know how you're going to curate the brand. I feel like I've already created the brand and I just constantly look at what's on trend, you know, in my current job, look at what ladies are currently wearing, what's going on the runways and what's happening in the industry to actually design my ranges. 
what market sets of title questions are aimed at and how are you identifying the market? Obviously, it's made for tall women, tall women who are five foot ten and over, so that's definitely my, my market and that's my niche. Um, in terms of who I aim at, so I'd say the age range would be between 18 and up to about 45 is my, uh, my target market. Great, and the last question from Rachel is, how international would a height of fashion brand be? It's immediately international. I'm already international. I'm, I'm sending uh, parcels and garments all around the world, so straight off the bat it has to be international. Everybody lives you know, around the world and um, that's who my market is. I'm, I'm trying to get to as many tall people as I possibly can. Uh, and she's curious about how you manage to maintain a balance between work, life and business. Any tips? <sighs> that is a hard one. I don't think I've got the balance quite right yet. <laughs> um, I would probably say I utilise as much time in my day as I possibly can. Literally, I even watch seminars, you know, going to bed or going to the bathroom, like those kind of sort of things is how I kind of utilise my time. Um, I don't really watch TV, I don't tend to have much downtime, so not necessarily a good thing, but certainly something I'm working towards. Great. And last we've got Anna from the USA. Like many, Anna has dreamed of starting a fashion brand and wants to know how much investment roughly you need up front. A lot of money, um, as much as you can possibly afford, in all honesty. It's I've, I'm very lucky because I've got skill sets in many areas for this business, so I've been able to save myself quite a bit of financial input in those areas, but if I didn't have that, I would probably have needed an extra 50 grand, I'd say, to have done what I've done. I've built my website myself, luckily, because I'm from a tech background, so I was able to do that, but most people don't have that skill set, and that would cost anywhere between you know five and 20 grand, even just to get a website up and running. So. As an example, I would say, do your research, know your backgrounds, and be prepared to constantly invest because it is something you always have to have money for. Connect with pattern maker, or are you that person yourself? I do use a girl in uh, New Zealand who is actually a fashion designer. So she looks over all of my specs. I give her some of the garments and things I need, and she'll put some of the specs and everything together for me that I can give to the manufacturers. They know exactly the requirements to make all the measurements for the design. So I actually do have my own bespoke measurement guide for height of fashion. So that's what I use, um, and obviously hence why it's a perfect fit for tall women. Do you have your collection made in advance or only when people order items? Definitely uh, in advance, I have to. Um, I don't know any manufacturer that would do made to order. Certainly not when it comes to big manufacturing as well. So you have to actually have your garments up front to be able to sell. Most retailers work that way too. Okay, so how do you decide how many items and of what size to make? Generally speaking, I've gone from a size range of extra small to extra large, which caters in Australian sizes from size eight to 10 to a size 16 to 18. Actually, I'll go definitely up to a size 18 in my extra large. Um, it's, that's, that's hard because we all do differ in sizes, but I've gone with the majority um, and the majority of the retail industry of what is catered for as well. But like I say, I know that what I'm doing is a niche and I'm certainly open to finding out the demand for bigger and also smaller sizes. So are you using local makers or outsourcing to factories? So I actually did I done quite a lot of due diligence before I picked my manufacturers and I've picked very, very high manufacturers and very, very good quality as well, just because that's key to me, you know, I'm making only fantastic garments that ladies love to wear and they look good in, as well as it feels good. Um, I would love to have made in Australia, but when I looked at the scalability versus what they could produce here in Australia for the cost, it just it wasn't a viable option in terms of business. So I went straight to China and I sourced that way. Great. Height of fashion is fashion forward, flattering and edgy. So if you could own your style you know whatever it is just wear it with confidence it doesn't matter if it's in trend it doesn't matter if it's off trend just wear it with confidence and you'll be surprised how good you look in it describe yourself in three words who um, strong confident and probably very driven <laughs> Uh, so this is the tall guys takeaway. What three nuggets of wisdom can you share with other women who might be looking to start their business or brand? 
research without fail, research, research, research as much as you can and do your homework in every aspect and understand what it takes to run a business because it's not just about the design, it's not just about a website. So much to this type of business that, you know, creating a, a label might sound very glamorous, but the differences are there is so many, it touches so many aspects of business that's hard to manage unless you know what you're talking about or doing. I would definitely say you need perseverance in this kind of business. Without fail, you can't go into it. You'll, there's very much ups and downs constantly, and you need to just always be backing yourself in order to kind of really get through some of the hardship. And the third would be have fun, you know, have fun creating things. That's, I think, what differentiates most people in the retail world is if you can actually be different and sell it, then you're, you're halfway there to having a business that's successful.